about five after. I think I'm going to get started just uh, and people can join as they will. It's an open meeting. <laughs> um, I want to thank everybody for joining us this afternoon um, or this morning, depending on where you're calling in from. Um, this is the third or fourth user group meeting that we've had for users of homelessdata.com. We have a wide range of users on the call um, today um, from people who use us all the time, every day, uploading and running reports to some folks who have never logged on and also some folks who actually don't even have accounts yet. Um, I hear some background. I'm going to ask folks again to mute, but maybe I can try. I think last time I tried it to... Can you still hear me? You are all muted, apparently. If you can't hear me, somebody... Uh, thanks, Chris. Okay. Terrific. Um, so we will have time for Q&A or Matt, if you need to jump in, I'm going to, uh, I'll unmute you as well. Um, so we're going to get started. Our agenda today, uh, we're going to talk about how to get started using homelessdata.com, how and when to submit fresh data, how to check the quality of the data for your project, um, how to run project level reports such as APRs and CAPERS, how to interpret the results, how to use some of the drill down features, and where to and how to get additional help and support. Um, and hopefully we'll have some uh, time for questions and discussions, but if not, we can continue offline as well. Um, we're going to start in this PowerPoint and some of the features, including screenshots, and then I'll shift over to actually logging into this data where we'll get into more detail about um, some of the features that we're going to introduce in the first portion, but it's um, a little too cumbersome to go back and forth. So accounts are generally created by your organization administrator for users. Um, occasionally, they may be made by a data source administrator, the, the HMIS administrator, or potentially by Simtech staff. Um, users set your own passwords. The email is your uh, ID, and that has to match the email in HMIS. Permissions to data are based on a couple of features. Um, who is actually doing the import? Uh, we make the assumption that if you have access to the data in HMIS, then it's okay for you to access it in homeless data. Um, in addition, specific permissions can be granted to support leveraging the work of others. So if one person, if the uh, manager or data source administrator is uh, doing a full import for the whole organization or the whole region, then project level staff are able to then review that data that's already in there and the data is constantly fresh. Similarly, if you are set up so that a project is doing that import, uh, a manager or somebody else could review the data that was imported. You don't all need to be importing data on top of each other. And that um, one of the ways that that's managed is through uh, permissions being granted. So submitting fresh data. Um, Piggybacking on what I was just talking about, the policies um, should reflect the roles and responsibility throughout the organization and the continuum to ensure that, there's re that the reporting is accurate and that everybody understands what's happening. Um, the process is that data is collected and updated in HMIS and then has to be imported into homelessdata.com. So people think, oh, I made the changes, but then we actually need the fresh data to run the reports over. Um, who does this and how often it's done and what the process is, again, should be in your own policies and procedures. Um, we encourage those policies to reflect um, the administrators importing the data on a regular schedule and reviewing the 
that data. Um, so how often data is submitted, again, is going to be driven by your project policies uh, and their organization and those of the continuum of care. The bottom line is you need to know who is doing what. Who's entering the data? Who's running reports over the data? Who's reviewing the data quality? Who's looking at um, how programs are performing? You know, where's the accountability both for the data and what's going on in the projects as reflected in the data? Um, for the system performance measures, um, we just take a minute and talk about the system performance measures because it occurs to me that maybe not everybody's really familiar with them, and I'll just take a moment. But the system performance measures, the fingerprints for these is really in the very language of the HEARTH Act. If you go back and read it, it's all about encouraging, supporting, requiring communities to apply the most effective practices uh, to reducing and ending homelessness in their community, and how each and every project impacts the overall uh, performance of the entire region. So each project has a responsibility to the region to meet to do the best that they can do and meet goals if those are set for the type of project that they are. And we'll talk about that more when we look at um, some of the reports, when we get into homeless data, and also in a few slides when we look at um, using project level performance. Um, the system performance measures are due to HUD on May 31st. First, Regions can resubmit for FY15, um, which is uh, 2014 to 2015. Um, and they have to submit for 2016 um, by May 31st. The look back period uh, for the measures when they're looking particularly at the return to homelessness, measure number two, that look back period goes back to October 1st, 2012. Um, so in general, uh, administrators for regions have been loading this data uh, going back to 2012. Um, and the data that needs to be brought in is, um, again, going back to 2012. And the data for each project should be current. In, home, in the platform. Um, so there's no need to re-import over old data. And we're going to show you this when we log in. But this is just a quick screen, um, oops, um, screenshot of the home page in Homeless Data. And all of those red bars are showing gaps in the data. So at the basic as the looking for data, and this isn't to call anybody out, but looking for data in that 2012 period or even more recently in this 2015 period, um, it's just not going to be there. And you're going to get errors or it's the data isn't going to be right. So when you're importing data, again, and we'll talk about this in a few minutes, when you're looking to see what data to import, you want to go back to your home screen and identify the gaps. And all you need to do is fill those gaps. And again, it's not necessarily that you imported the data. It could be that somebody else imported the data um, at the project level uh, for the project that you're looking at. So just taking a minute, I know not everybody on the call is an ETO customer. We have quite a few who aren't, but just bear with me because um, this screen is really not reflective of what is most helpful when we're looking at um, the um, pulling in data for the system level projects. So um, yeah, the high version is going to be 5.1. Um, and the scope uh, is going to be either the program or program group, depending on how you need to sort of break it up. These grant start and end dates um, is not 
the range that we want. It's going to go back uh, again to fill in gaps. The administrators for the regions are the ones who are really focusing on making sure that that historical data is in there. So before everybody starts going crazy and starts importing data going back to 2012, please work that out with your uh, the HMIS or the COC leads who are responsible for these reports um, to make sure that people aren't kind of stepping on each other's toes and doing work that isn't necessary. And um, we've had uh, a lot of improvement in the performance of the system, but we don't want to uh, clog it up with with you know tons and tons of records that have to, that just don't need to be in there. Um, you will want to include the readable CSVs. Uh, you don't need the XML file. Most of you don't have it. I don't think anybody does anymore, actually, for 5.1 data. Um, and then you hit Submit. When you hit Submit, you'll go to this screen. You will click on this far right Go to Reporting site, and that will open up in Homeless Data. So I just wanted to take a minute for our ETO users and go over that because I think that's causing a lot of confusion. I think it caused a lot of confusion when people were running pit reports and just pulling in one night of data um, that wasn't necessary. It was perhaps already there or it's just not the way to be thinking about data. It isn't about, um, um, you know, just one night. Chris is asking about XML. I, I don't think it, I don't think HUD supports XML in the 5.1 format. I think it's all CSVs. So we are working with social to talk about updating those screens. Um, so again, this is uh, reviewing data quality. Once you've brought that data in um, to homelessdata.com, one of the main things in, uh, that the to do at the project level is making sure that your data quality is good. And we'll take a look at this report again when we log into the system. But this isn't something that should be done once a year when it's time for an APR. Um, because the truth is, is that the continuums of care need to submit reports throughout the entire year. And having current data in HMIS is really critical to the overall operation of the continuum, um, not only for data quality, but looking at performance as continuums should be monitoring this stuff uh, more closely. Um, I'm cognizant that the NOFA is going to be coming out soon as well. Um, Matt's talking about XML schema. I'm thinking what we want to maybe do is provide some clarification on XML, and we'll get that out to folks um, soon. Um, so these reports, again, we'll take a look at it when we log in, but basically it goes through the um, universal data elements in, in these boxes, in these tables, and up here um, you're looking at the uh, enrollment um, and services and then this green line is what's in the um, project descriptor elements as what the number of beds that are participating in HMIS. So this particular project looks like it has 18 beds participating in HMIS according to HMIS, but it consistently has over 40 people staying in it, in those units. So something's out of whack. Um, my guess is that the beds need to be adjusted. If we had seen this blue bar going up, 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 it would tell us that in all likelihood people were just simply not being dismissed. Um, there's a lot you can tell from these graphs. Um, and um, so, it, at the project level, you should know, does this basically look right? Does this make sense? Does it make sense based on the time period that we ran this report for that we saw 178 people, most of whom were children? Um, and children, maybe it's a, a youth program, maybe it's a you know DYS program or something. So we'll take a look at that uh, again when we log in. Um, this is a little snapshot of um, what we did with the city of Detroit looking at project performance measures. Um, 
and we can talk about this more or offline. It's just, it's just a little uh, taste of what we did. But if you were to dive into, as we did, the system level performance, the system performance measures, there are um, quite a few of the components from the APRs that actually contribute towards the system performance. So if you think about the uh, APR is being project level, um, and again, we can take a peek at this, but if you look at like length of stay in a particular project, that's also going to impact length of homelessness overall uh, throughout a system. So um, what this graph shows is these are projects um, that have been masked, um, and it shows the number of people roughly speaking, and when it's live, you can hover over it and see the actual numbers of people from each project who stayed those particular number of days. Um, so um, um, Matt, I'm, I'm not, I'm trying to read your notes, Matt, um, but they're coming in partially. I think that Matt and Chris are having a conversation. Um, all right um thanks heidi i had to unmute everybody so I now know. everybody's unmuted um matt's going to take the reins. i understand um yeah i think the, the sidebar conversation the chat we're, we're i'm updating that as you go um you know so if people do have questions that you know they want to hold up the conversation you can use that chat bar feature um but I think it's important that we can have some uh, back and forth dialogue on some of these. Uh, so yes, for Detroit, we wanted to see the projects that were having the most upward pressure on the on the length of stay, which is SPM one, System Performance Measure one. Um, and as you'll see, um, the project that's orange and the project that's green, um, the overall utilization of bed utilization, um, those two projects had. The, the most um, utilization as far as the community is concerned. Um, so the one in the far right, the bottom right, um, that had that had the least um, overall impact on the length of homelessness. And you'll notice uh, as far as the size of the blocks, um, the 91 to 180 days left side for both the orange and the green project, <clears throat> that was the cohort of clients, the group of clients that had the most um, overall utilization for that community as far as the products we selected. So the point being is we can look at these charts, which we used uh, results from the APRs, and so um, we suggest on a project level to look at the results from your APRs, and we map those, and we charted those out. But you can actually see uh, from doing this, you know, the ones that have the most influence, they're, they're increasing the length of homelessness overall, as well as the ones that are pulling it back down. So that's the, the idea of this. So it is project level analysis of data that will influence the system performance measures. Move on, Heidi, sorry. Okay, <laughs> no worries. Um, I was just looking at the chat also. Um, as it's just, you know, it's hard to kind of do both things at one time, but um, so I'll let Matt, why don't you keep up with the chat, Matt, and I'm going to kind of just go keep going. <laughs> there is, there's good conversation happening, but uh, thanks. Um, so um, we're about to switch over to actually getting into the platform. Um, there are a handful of reports that you're going to see. The data quality scorecard, which we just looked at. The APR, the uh, HUD CAPER report for ESG programs, um, the HUD data quality report, which is a new report um, that came out with the APR uh, at the end of March, the point in time report, um, and system performance measures, um, a, a bunch of them. We're going to take uh, some time and look at how to use the drill down features in those reports as well as the uh, additional filters that are available. So um, I'm going to go ahead and log in. So this is the um, front page. Um, 
before I actually log in, I'm gonna, I just wanna highlight a couple of things here. Um, we took uh, publicly available data from HUD, from the PIT report and the HIC report, um, and brought it all in. Um, and so it's available for the whole country based on what was, um, <coughs> what was uh, published in HUD. So this is, again, a similar chart that we were just looking at. Um, and this is uh, total homeless for each COC. Um, and you can also filter it by year if you wanted to take a look. And we know there's been a lot of movement in uh, Massachusetts over, you know, over time and COCs have moved, uh, shifted uh, boundaries. Um, this is another breakdown. This shows us the sheltered versus unsheltered. I'm just going to quickly kind of go through some of these. Again, this is just Massachusetts, but you can do anything. And you could also actually do some comparison of um, different states or different con continuums. So we had this set for a while. We were looking at the states in New England. But if you wanted to just look at um, yeah, I'll just grab a couple. So, yep. So this is yeah public uh, pit and HIC data, and then some census data. This is a breakdown of just some of the different um, variables that are available. So I encourage you guys to, um, at your leisure, kind of log in and. Um, play around with this, see how your COC compares with others. Um, did some analysis. This is the number of beds in your region uh, and the number of people, homeless people. The awards, and then we have different measures here as well that you can click through. Um, okay, so there's that. Um, also here we have resources and support. And this is where we will be putting uh, these trainings, uh, recordings of these trainings as well. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Um, mo most of you on the call are veteran users, but I know that there are a handful of you who are not. So somebody forwarded you an email and said, please register for this. Um, so welcome. But as you go through it, maybe it's right for you to be on the call and learn these tools and get an account and do this work, and maybe it's not. And that's going to be a conversation between your project, the organization, and the COC lead. And again, it comes back to your policies and procedures and who is doing what. Um, so this is that home screen we were um, talking about. Uh, people are pretty caught up. Um, so these are some of the projects that have um, uh, gaps. Um, I obviously I see everything in our system. You will only see the projects that you have access to. Um, okay. So um, um, this is the screen where you would be uploading data if you're manually uploading data. Um, if you are sending data from ETO, it would be coming over. If you're manually uploading a data set, you would use that button. You would have a, a zip file of CSVs stored somewhere securely because uh, it does have client level information. Um, you would name it, you would select 5.1, you're going to find that zip file, and then you'll upload. Um, and hopefully it goes through. Uh, to run reports, um, there are a lot of reports in here. I ran a bunch of reports last night, but you guys are so fast. Everybody's running so many reports. Mine are already buried. <laughs> um, 
so this is the reason I run them. I ran these over um, demo data. It's um, it's not a very exciting data set, but it does um, allow us to demonstrate some of the additional features uh, of reports without revealing people's names. So this is that data quality report that we were just looking at um, on the in the PowerPoint part. And this program, a data quality scorecard is actually going to break it out by each project. So you can run a data quality scorecard over a whole import over lots of projects if you have access to lots of projects, and it will break it out um, program by program. Most of the other reports, maybe even all of the other reports, um, combine the data, integrate that data. Uh, within the data source um, to provide a single report, but this one breaks it out. So it's a really important place to start. Um, so these drill down features, what I just did there, by clicking on that blue button, that blue number is a hyperlink into the actual records. So for example, this one, if there's an issue here, you know, you might want to see those 10 people. Okay, are those 10 people the people that were in my program um, with these really creative, beautiful names? Um, and that can be very helpful. But even more helpful, perhaps, might be, oh, these, um, these three people are missing veteran status. That's, that's important. Let's see if we know the veteran status of those three people. So um, if I'm a, a program manager, I might run this list. I can then export this to uh, an Excel spreadsheet. And now I have a list that I can work with. Again, it has client level information. So you can't email these lists around within your organization unless you've got a policy that allows you to do that. Um, but it does give you the client level detail that you need to help to fix those reports. So it may be that at the project level, you're running these reports um, and you're saying, oh, I better go check those three clients. Um, because and and finish it off. Maybe they're not veterans, but then it should be is then it should be a no and not a missing. <clears throat> value. Um, so that's how the drill down features work. Um, Matt, do you want to add anything about that report or the drill down features? No, I think that's that you, you covered that well. Okay, thanks. Um, the APR report, um, I just want to take a few minutes and look at this. Also, actually, let me do it here. Um, so I don't know if people saw what I just did. So you, there's the report that I'm interested in. I can do different things with this. Um, I can open it up. I can open it from here or from over here to expand it. I can download it as a PDF. And if you download it as a PDF, you lose those hyperlinks. So emailing PDFs of APRs, totally fine um, and should be done. A lot of times that's part of the policies and procedures. A program might run it and then submit a PDF to a manager to review. Um, and then the other uh, important new feature is this downloading the CSV package. Um, for those of you who have to submit these reports to HUD, um, you would run it in here after checking everything, download this package, and then that is the package that gets uploaded to SAGE, which is the HUD system. Um, I can show you that because I think it's also, I think people think that it's, you know, really mysterious sometimes, these these files. But all of that data that goes into an APR comes out into these files. 
65 different files. Um, um, and these are actually the files that we can use to do some of the project level analysis. But this is what you would be sending, um, um, uploading to Sage. Um, so again, let me open it up and we can take a look. So again, you've got these drill down features. Um, and this whole um, Q6, all of these data quality questions are brand new with this report. And they help get at some of the nitty gritty uh, details of data quality that impact reports. It's some of the, the logic testing across questions. Um, and allows uh, some further detail. Um, this is another reason right here as to why your data should be up to date all the time. Um, because if you're off and the data wasn't there for July, it's not going to show you the accurate, uh, you know, by the time you get to this report or if somebody else is running a report, you just want to have current data all the time. Um, I'm just taking a look at the length of stay questions. These questions around income and non-cash benefits, these are, will, are components of system performance measure four, which measures income and change in income over time. Um, these questions 22, a and B um, do look at length of participation. So in this question, you know, when Matt was showing, talking about, well, which projects have the, the biggest impact on that extended length of stay, from this detail, you can see, well, which clients are having that impact on the extended uh, length of stay within a project? So from a project management perspective, you might click on these seven clients. Again, this is demo data um, and say, who are these folks? We need to get them out of here. What's going on? Um, you know, how do we how do we push this through? How do we get these folks out? What's the issues? What's the plan? Um, The other big question that um, really impacts the a, a few of the system performance measures in terms of you know positive exits um, is here this uh, Q23. HUD is really interested in this top category. I don't think they care as much about the particulars within it, but it's this category that you're striving for whenever you can. Um, and so if you have folks in other categories, you know, um, everybody in this program exited to a positive destination. So that's, that's how it sums up. Um, and then it breaks it down by the short-term stayers and the long-term stayers. Um, there are other measures within the APR that are particularly relevant to the system level performance uh, measure reports. Um, so again, I, uh, you know, this is how it gets done is up to your organization and your project and your COC. COCs, I imagine many of them, we know that many of them are setting performance targets and goals for each of the projects. Um, and some of these performance measures uh, certainly may come into account when COCs are looking to project ranking uh, as part of the NOFA, which will be happening soon. Uh, this summer, I imagine, it's going to be all about ranking. So these are some of the uh, questions in the APR to look okay? at. Um, the other, some of the other reports that are available, as we talked about, the CAPER, pretty similar to the APR. Um, uh, I can mute everybody again.
Um, the HUD data quality report, which is new. The HUD data quality report is really question five and six from the APR and all of those subparts of that first part of the APR. That's all that's in this report. They're the same questions and the same logic. The HIC, the PIT, um, and then um, the system performance measure reports. But I'm just going to show on an APR, since we're really mostly focusing on project level um, reports, um, how to use some of these filters. So again, this is a demo data set. Um, it's got one organization in it. It's got three projects in it. I'll leave it open for all of them. But from this button, I can also filter. I can filter by age, minimum or maximum. I can filter by chronic status and veteran status. So this has a number of really practical applications. Um, not only, you know, sort of globally are we really interested in ch child and youth homelessness. So minimum, uh, you know, um, maximum age might be 18 if you wanted to just look at kids. Um, you might want to do a young adult um, search, your 18 to 24 year olds. You might want to do um, a minimum age of 55 if you're looking at seniors in your uh, region. You might want to say, who are my um, not yet school age children in my project, in my region? And you could even do it. Uh, you know, do a report like that, or who are my, um, who are all of my school age children from K through 12? And then if you run that report, it would even give it to you by gender or whatever. So you could do, you know, backpack drive or Christmas or whatever uh, is, might be helpful in your project. So part of this is, is how do we think about, you know, we have to do all of this report reporting for HUD. We have to collect all of this information. And so if you have to do it anyway, and it really needs to be good anyway, how do you use it so that it makes sense for you? Um, and that's, um, you know, that's what it's all about. How do we use these to uh, learn from it um, and do the best that we can? Um, so those are the reports that I have, um, and reviewing and interpreting results. So again, if you found um, data quality errors and you're sending it back to the project to fix things, then that data would need to be um, resubmitted. Um, that was kind of all I had on the platform. Um, we have the resources I want to show you um, and how to um, give us feedback. But I think I'm going to go ahead and unmute and um, some questions. And Matt, actually, do you want, is there, um, is there stuff in the chat that you want to um, highlight? Yeah, I can start off with that. For people that haven't been following along, um, there were some questions about what's expected um, in regards to data completion rates for Social Security numbers, for example. Um, HUD hasn't come out typically to say we expect, you know, 90% completion or higher um, on the project level. That's what we tend to look for um, because we look at other projects around the country, and that seems to be a good threshold. Um, there are communities that that are doing um, not doing a very good job of this, and some of it's not really um, related to the the end user. It's more policy driven. But just keep in mind for things like social security number, if you don't have the data, it's hard to do matches with non HMIS data sets. So when we want to establish the value of of housing, for example, um, those matches, those data matches that you could do really help to bring in cost information. Maybe it's from corrections, maybe it's from uh, the healthcare system, um, whatever it might be. 
but you know, having that SSN is really like the, the, the key to, to unlock the, the data um, from these other data sets. So keep that in mind. Um, and also, it's not only on the project level, because we all have data quality scorecards at the beginning of our APRs now, um, and other reports will be done. Um, you know, so HUD's putting much more reliance on the data being tight. Um, you know, but it's also the NOFA, the NOFA funding availability. Um, they have overall data completion rates for the community, um, so that could impact your community scoring if everyone is um, globally not doing well with this. So, um, but again, to the point about the relationship with the project performance measures and the system performance measures, uh, you know, a few bad apples can spoil the whole bunch. So, um, you know, just try to try to bring up the ones that are low performers to be closer to where the high performers are, you know, the best you can. Yep. Um, Nassima, your question about the webinar being recorded, yes, it will. Um, we have a YouTube channel, so that's actually, I think Heidi is one of the follow-up slides, which we can share that as well. Um, we'll be posting um, the recording on YouTube and make that available from our, from our homeless data support page, or resources page, I'm sorry. So, Heidi, I don't know if, you can, if, you, if that's easy to do to jump back over the PowerPoint. And um, yes, you're, you're, you're dead on. It's not it's not easy to get to send if you have a large number of undocumented participants. Um, also, um, the, comp the composition of um, you know programs you have in your area also has a you know weighs into it. A lot of high turnover individual emergency shelters that um, don't expect sobriety. Um, then you might have problems getting data at all. Um, same with street outreach. So it's uh, it's not it's not. Um, that's why I think partially there is no one answer, and it's really based on your your, your regional circumstances too. Uh, Nuno just had a, asked a question for Measure One: length of stay. Is it based on program history or bed nights for the shelters? Um, length of, of homelessness or length of stay. Um, actually looks at uh, the bed tracking method to determine if it's it, which one it's using. So the specifications, if you Google um, system HUD system performance measures, uh, unfortunately there's eight pages of specifications for just for length of stay, <laughs> the SPM1. Um, and we, sh we, I believe we actually have the guidance. Um, if not, we can put it up on here. Oh, uh, there's HUD system performance measures um, tools, and the spec should be on there. I'll add the specs, yeah. Um, no, maybe when you click on that, that page, I think it might bring you to a page that has the specs on it, is what I was saying. Oh, probably does. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you can you can follow along the rules. But, yeah, it's for your high turnover um, individual shelters, no, no. Um, we're going to be looking at bed nights. Um, Q9 and where it pulls from. Q9 A and B on the APR. Um, again, this is, a, you know, the, the programming specifications are what we follow for all of these. So without having Q not, the questions memorized, um, <laughs> although I do tend to dream about some of this at night. Which is, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I'm guessing Q9 might be his outreach. I forget. Um, but I, can, I, I mean, I can, yeah, I can follow up with that. Yeah, so we can follow I mean, up. I we think if there are particular questions, I mean, about specific questions, um, you can also put that into the help desk. Yeah, I'm just going to give a link to the vendor resources that have all the, it has the guidance for the data exchange standards, I mean, the data exchange format, um, measures. And so we also have this, you know, this work on our, on our, Site as well, but particular questions. If, you, if you're not, if you're stuck, help desk at SimTech Solutions. But look to the specs first because that's what we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna refer to those because that's how we um, coded every report. Um, and if if you see that we're doing it differently or we're missing something, by all means, let us know. Um, but any chance, anytime you're like not sure what, what the business rules are, it's the specifications. Um, the only uh, caveat to that is we still don't have specifications for AHAR, um, and we aren't expecting them, according to HUD, the vendor meeting um, for this year either. So, um, and we didn't have for a point in time. 
So um, point in time was also culled together from various documents, um, the FAQs it's, um, and some, uh, some other guides that they have out there. So. Are there other questions? We have about 10 minutes left. Make sure. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to do that, folks. <laughs> uh, what happened? What just happened? Is that a question? Okay. Well, if you do, if if there are no other questions, uh, again, if it's just reaching out to us, um, not an issue. You can always solutions dot com. Um, if it's something that that you need to address, it's help desk at simtechsolutions dot com, um, or we're going to uh, the actual help desk site. So the bottom right of of homeless data, there it says need help, contact support. You can you can just click that link and it'll bring you over to our help desk. Or you can help desk at simtechsolutions.com. Um, just a Q9 and A and B, I'm looking at those. Those are street outreach programs. Okay. Yeah, I refer back to the specifications, but um, th those are um, services that they typically get looked at. So you're going to be looking at um, the actual, um, whether there was actual service or referral that was done. But um, if anyone's stuck on a particular question and the, the specs don't seem clear, um, by all means, you know, send something to the help desk. And if we want, if we need to do a screen sharing or have a separate follow-up conversation, we'd we'll be glad to do that. But uh, the okay. big thing that I wanted just to, to convey is thank you for all the hard work you do. Um, you know, it is the project level data that influences the system performance measures, and it's what we need to make sense of all of this. And, you know, are we doing the right thing to end homelessness? So, um, oftentimes we're in a thankless job, and so I think we have to take a breath once in a while to thank each other. So, so keep up the good work, and just know that we're here for you to, to support your work as you go on. Um, and enjoy this beautiful day if you are on the East Coast. Beautiful enjoy. wherever you are. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.